waiting. Um, Senator Ellis, yeah. did you have enough time to look at those amendments from budget and tax, or you need one more day? That's also uh, Ms. Foxworth's bill, right? Yeah. I'm going to let uh, Ms. Foxworth sit down first while, or give out paper. To start with the one we left off, well, the one we uh, discussed the other yesterday or whenever, the days are running together, as we can see. Uh, Senate Bill 66 had a dual assignment. Uh, it was ourselves and then budget and tax, budget and tax, accepted our amendments and added some more. That, that was the Elfrith bill that Senator Ellis asked to hold to look at the amendments yesterday. I think there was really, I didn't hear any major opposition, but I wanted to give him time, and I believe he's fine with that uh, B&T amendments or not. Uh, would you hit uh, Senator Ellis's button? Mm -hmm. hold, hold, hold one hold second. On, hold on. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Vice Chair. Um, yes, I'm uh, fine with the amendments. Uh, my exact concern is addressed on page 16 where it says, nothing in this act shall be construed to reduce the annual allocation of funds for rural broadband infrastructure. And so it's actually put in the amendment, so I'm very happy about that. There's no objection to the B&T amendments, so it's our amendments or the sponsor amendments, B&T's amendments. The bill as amended is before you. This is SB 66. Will anybody be voting against it? Seeing none, that will move to the floor with a unanimous vote. That's one out of the way. Now, we're going to go to Ms. Foxworth, um, list 21. Let's start with 516. So State Board of Environmental Health Specialist Fees General Fund. This is a bill sponsored by Senator Klausmeyer. It removes the State Board of Environmental Health Specialist Fund, uh, requires the State Board of Environmental Health Specialists to pay money collected from its fees and licenses into the general fund instead of the State Board of Environmental Health Specialist Fund. There's no opposition and no um, amendments, and this is a reintroduction from last year. Is there a motion? It's moved and seconded. Discussion on the bill. And you said no amendments, Alexis. Any discussion? People comfortable with it? Again, no opposition. Um, seeing no red lights or no hands, I will assume uh, everyone supports it. So that will be marked as unanimous and sent to the floor. Next. Senate Bill 517. Let me interrupt for one second. Um, I said we had our one list of eight bills. We also have the local alcohol bills we're going to try to knock out. We shouldn't take very long on that, but I wanted to not do those today, too. Okay, uh, Ms. Foxworth. Senate Bill 517, State Board of Physical Therapy Examiners, temporary licenses to practice physical therapy. Unlimited physical therapy. This is sponsored by Senator Klaus Meyer as well. The bill authorizes the State Board of Physical Therapy Examiners to issue temporary licenses to practice physical therapy and to practice limited physical therapy to applicants who have met every application required in statute with the exception of passing the exam. 
Uh, the temporary license authorizes the individual, the applicant, to only practice under supervision. Um, temporary license expires either 90 days after it was granted, when the applicant receives a full license, or when the temporary license is revoked. It also places temporary license holders under the scope of possible board disciplinary consequences. There are no amendments to the bill and there was no opposition at the hearing. Debate on the bill. Uh, I see no hands or, or mics on. Uh, we'll assume this should be recorded as 11 0. Anytime I do that and you want to vote no, just raise your hand. I'm not trying to railroad this through. Okay, the bill passes 11 0. Next. Senate Bill 565, Public Health Data, Race and Ethnicity Information. This is sponsored by Senator Griffith. Um, this bill requires the Office of Minority Health and Health Disparities to collaborate with the certain, with well, all of the Health Occupations Board within statute to publish on the Department of Health's website a health care disparities policy report card, that's the name of it, that must include the racial and ethnic composition of the health occupations licensees. The office is required to respond for health data and that includes race and ethnicity information within 30 days. The bill expands the responsibilities of the director of this office to meet with representatives from the Maryland Health Care Commission to review race and ethnicity data. Also requires each health occupations board to include an option for applicants to select race and to encourage applicants to provide their race and ethnicity. Um, there was opposition from the Board of Professional Counselors and there are no amendments to the bill. Let's put it in front of us. Someone, you want to put it on the floor? It's been moved and seconded. Um, uh, I'm, one second. I just. Yes, Senator. In favor of the bill. Uh, good Senator Ellis yesterday reminded us that this information is important and this expands the number of professions that are being evaluated and examined. So I think it's very appropriate. Move favorable. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. And just as a follow up to that, during the hearing, if you'll recall it, there, there was a question asked about why the board wasn't supporting, and they had in their testimony that. Um, that they did not think they could re provide all the required information. But as I recall, the Senate sponsor, Senator Griffith, responded whatever information they could share would be helpful. So I think that addressed that concern. Further discussion, further discussion on the Griffith bill, no amendments. Uh, will anybody be voting in the opposition, in the negative, seeing no hands? We'll record that as 11 0 and also go to the floor. Next bill. Senate Bill 568, Healthcare Practitioners Telehealth, out of state healthcare practitioners. This is sponsored by the Governor's Administration and uh, through the Office of the President. The bill allows an out of state healthcare practitioner who is licensed or certified in another state to provide telehealth services within the state so long as they are registered by that particular health occupations board. The bill outlines the registration requirements, provides a scope of practice, and accounts for disciplinary action, which must be taken within the health occupations boards. Uh, the bill creates a licensure exemption from out of, for, for out-of-state telehealth practitioners under all health occupations that are covered within our statute. Uh, opposition from several entities, uh, Maryland Right to Life, Optometry Board, MedCHI, uh, licensed professional counselors, um, and there are uh, a couple of others as well. Um, the amendments that were requested, there were no sponsor amendments that were adopted, but there were several amendments that were requested from various boards um, within the health occupations scope and article asking to be specifically carved out from the requirements of the bill. Senator Carrozza. Mr. Chair, I had a question. Um, I'm trying to recall the administration's testimony on that I think there were two different bills right and one of them they said it would not interfere with other is that the compact bill 571 is maybe I'm I'm just trying I know we're doing but 
th those hearings were held the same day, and I think they were back-to-back -back bills, and I'm just trying to refresh um, if that was the, if that I th it probably was the comments for f SB 571. Right, yes. So the governor's administration requested two. 568, this is a out-of-state exemption. And then 571 deals with entrance into the compact. So we did hear those on the same day. Okay. To entertain a motion, um, if there is one. Okay, Senator Lamb. It's going to move unfavorable. It seems like there's a lot of concern that have been brought up um, by this, including things like background checks that have not been fully fleshed out, um, particularly if it's someone who is from, an, uh, from a different state whose home board is trying to conduct an investigation of a complaint, um, as well as educational requirements. I think some of the testimony also cited the fact that this could undermine a lot of the existing compacts or compacts that are under consideration already. It seems like just a lot of outstanding concerns with this, and I'm not sure we can solve this within the time that we have. Let's see if there's a second for the uh, motion first. Okay, uh, let's go to Senator Riley. I have another comment, if I may. So the the uh, fiscal note reminds us that they're not allowed to set up a practice, a, a physical practice, and not allowed to do a st uh, provide in-person services or describe or prescribe or dispense a controlled dangerous substance. This is a, a little bit of a territorial issue. I believe, Dr. Lamb, they can do this now under the emergency order. I am, I am an advocate for patient access. I am an advocate for breaking down artificial barriers during this emergency. But I have to agree with uh, Senator Lamb that uh, we need to take another hard look at it a year from now. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, further discussion? Okay. Uh, you know, the other thing I just might add, I see many Department of Health letters where they all want to be cut out from his own administration, uh, a board or, or, you know, whether it's audiologist, therapist, whatever. So, okay, the motion is um, unfavorable. Will anybody be voting against the unfavorable? Well, I was hoping to give one to the governor, but I've been convinced an unfavorable. So uh, I think it's unanimous. Um, this will not go to the floor. 11-0, unfavorable. Next bill. Senate Bill 571, Interstate Licensed Professional Counselor Compact. This, like the last, um, is sponsored by governor's administration through the Office of the President. This bill creates an interstate compact for the uh, health occupation of licensed professional counselors, outlines requirements to participate in the compact, and it establishes the Counseling Compact Commission's outlining its responsibilities and its membership. And like most of the compacts, the bill is contingent on enactment of similar legislation um, in nine states. Uh, the compact itself comes into effect when it's enacted in the 10th member state. There was no opposition to the bill. There is one sponsor amendment, and that's to make this bill an emergency bill. And the way that'll work in a compact scheme, which has its c a contingent effective date, um, if the legislation passes in all 10 states prior to the effective date, um, the bill will just go in effect the earlier of the two. That's a good question. Um, on the sign-up, it has Jake Whitaker, governor's office, favor with amendment. Do we know what the amendment was or is? An emergency bill. Oh. Okay. Um, is there a motion on the bill? It's moved. It's moved and seconded. Discussion on the bill. Well, any objection to the amendment? Seeing none, the bill before you is... The bill with this uh, amendment of making an emergency. Any discussion on the bill? Will anybody be voting against it? Okay, then it will be uh, recorded as 11 0. Senator Simonair, tell the governor I'm with him. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you got one. <laughs> 
Senate Bill 646, Alcohol and Drug Counseling, Alcohol and Drug Trainees, Practice Through Telehealth. This is sponsored by Senators Carroza and Senator Kagan. This bill permits, permits alcohol and drug counseling trainees who do not currently have a license or certification to provide telehealth services under supervision, quite simply put. There aren't any amendments to the bill and there was no opposition. Ready? Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> It's been moved and seconded uh, discussion on the bill. Seeing none, this too will be uh, recorded as 11-0 and sent to the floor. Great work, committee. We knocked those babies out. Okay, we're going to go to um, uh, Senator Simon, do you care, 22 or 23? Okay, um, well, counsel, you guys take over however you want to proceed. So, 22 um, is the I, let list. Let me just interrupt for a minute. These are all these are all local bills. The three statewide bills are not on this list. I don't think we may have one tomorrow. Um, and if there's one that you have a problem with, and I'm going to give it to the subcommittee chair in a minute, um, we can also vote these as a as a list together for local bills and not have to discuss each one. So, um, Senator Riley. My only question is, do we have the local letters from all of the, I have a yes from uh, the uh, legal counsel. In that case. We have a crack staff here, Senator. We're ready to roll. So, it's up to the subcommittee chair, Senator Simon Air, if you want to vote this as, I mean, everything on voting list 22 has no amendments. I don't know if you want to pull any out or if you want to vote it as a consent calendar. I'm happy with consent, but I'd like to pull out Senate Bill 791, which is the local version of Senate Bill 205, which we're still working on. 791 and what? Just 791. Okay, so list 22, all the bills other than 791. Is there a motion? The moved and seconded discussion. Anyone to talk about the Allegheny County alcoholic annual fee? Oh, right. Seeing not, uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed, nay. Uh, that is moved unanimously. Senator, do you want to, should we sit on it until the other passes, or what's your pleasure? Well, I was just going to, these have to go out and be reported, and then we can consent them on third reader, correct? Because we'll have to describe each of them, or we don't have to do that. Amendment. We don't describe them on the floor. Mm -mm. Okay. Yeah, I think the president will ask people if they want to pull it off. Right. Okay. You know you got cool. I like that. Yeah. No. Thank you, Senator Patterson. There are some on the back too. Just so you know. Just saying. Um, uh, Senator Simon Air. So, should we just sit on Youngs for now until two or five moves? Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, hold on. 291. 791. Okay, next list. Okay, Senate Bill 386, Hartford County Senators, Hartford County Alcoholic Beverages Assisted Living Program License. This bill establishes a class ALP assisted living program beer wine and liquor license in Hartford County the Hartford County Board of Licensed Commissioners may issue the license to a manager of an assisted living program that is licensed by the Department of Human Services under 191804.1 of the health general article and two may be operated under a management agreement the annual license fee is five thousand dollars there is one amendment it's on page two of your voting packet for voting list number 23, and it changes the annual license fee from $5,000 to $3,500. Um, can, can we put it on the floor? Any objection to a favorable? Any objection to the amendment? That's adopted to the bill as amended. Seeing no lights or hands, uh, that will pass with a unanimous vote. Next. 
Uh, Senate Bill 390, Senator Gallion, Harford County, Alcoholic Beverages Gift Basket Permit. This bill establishes a gift basket permit in Harford County. The bill authorizes the Harford County Board of License Commissioners to issue the permit to a person who, one, whose primary business is the sale and delivery of flowers, two, whose business includes the sale and delivery of gift, gift baskets of flowers, food, or other items, and three, who does not hold another alcoholic beverages license or permit. The board is prohibited from issuing a permit for use in conjunction with or on the premises of a chain store, supermarket, or discount house. A permit holder may deliver and sell to consumers of a legal drinking age located in the county gift baskets containing specified volumes of beer, wine, or liquor products purchased from a retail license holder. The permit holder must maintain records and submit reports required by the board. The annual permit fee is $100. You have amendments to this bill on page three of your packet. And what this does is it requires them to be subject to the alcohol awareness training requirements. Um, anybody want to move this? It's moved and moved and seconded. Any objection to the amendment? The amendment's adopted. Any objection to the bill? Seeing none. Another one for Harford County. Okay, next. Senate Bill 426, Senator Ferguson, Baltimore City, 46th District, Alcoholic Beverage Licenses. This bill authorizes a holder of a Class 9 limited distillery license who also holds a Class D six-day beer, wine, and liquor license and is located on the 420 hundred block of East Pratt Street to apply to the Baltimore City Board of License Commissioners to convert the existing Class D six-day beer, wine, and liquor license into a Class D seven-day beer, wine, and liquor license. The bill also authorizes the board to issue a Class D, Class D beer and light wine license for an establishment in Ward 26, Precinct 8, on the west side of the 1200 block of the South Haven Street. I'm sorry, excuse me. That has executed a memorandum of understanding with the Brewers Hill neighbors. <laughs> she gets giddy presenting the president of the Senate's bill, I think, is what's happening here. It's just very specific. <laughs> so there's an amendment that begins on page four of your packet. And I do believe that President Ferguson explained what this did. Um, in the hearing, essentially, there was a, a brewery that they felt was going to go away, and then it came back, and those type of things. That's on page um, page four of your packet. Anybody object to adopting the amendment? Seeing no objection, the bill as amended is before you. Will anybody be voting against the Senate President's local liquor bill? <laughs> Eleven zero bill passes. Next. Oh. 489 Anne Arundel County Alcoholic Beverages Class MT License. Bill establishes a Class MT movie theater beer and wine license in Anne Arundel County. The Anne Arundel County Board of License Commissioners may issue the license to the owner of a movie theater in the county that holds a crowd control training certification. The license authorizes the sale of beer and wine for on premises consumption as specified. Um, the license holder is authorized to sell beer and wine from 4 p.m. to midnight and is subject to specified alcohol awareness training requirements. Um, there is an amendment in your packet. Um, begins on page 9 from Senator Beidel. Um, it's actually three amendments. The first is technical. The second strikes the prohibition on consuming beer and wine in the public viewing theater and adds language limiting patrons to a single serving of beer and wine at a time with a maximum of two servings per day. Um, and the third requires a holder of an alcoholic beverage license for a movie theater to renew the license as a class MT beer and wine license. I do just want to flag, I, I noticed just as I was going through this before, that that last one should probably be clarified to say that the holder of an alcoholic beverages license for a movie theater in Anne Arundel County has to do it as an MT license because it's cross-referencing just the Anne Arundel County specific provisions. Um, if no objection, that's a technical correction, so that's adopted. Okay, um, 
I assume it's been moved and seconded. I don't think there's a lot of controversy um, on on moving it. Um, any objection to the amendment? Did you want to speak on the bill or the amendment? I just had a question for the okay. subcommittee chair. Senator Simon Ayer, I'm assuming that the reason that all of these bills on on voting list number 23 are here because they have amendments and 22 was clean, is that why? So there's nothing else special about these. They just needed a little bit of love. Perfect. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. 489 as amended. Uh, any objections? Seeing none, 49 passes unanimously to the floor. Next. Ninety, um, Anne Arundel County Board of License Commissioners Chief Inspector. This bill requires the Anne Arundel County Board of License Commissioners to hire a full-time Chief Inspector. There are two amendments. Um, the first is on page 11 of the voting packet. This amendment strikes language in the current law authorizing the board to employ one part-time Chief Inspector. So just to conform since they will now be having a full-time Chief Inspector. And then on page 12, um, there's another amendment which alters the salary specifications for the chief inspector. Okay. Uh, it's moved, seconded. Any objection to adopting the amendment? Saying none. It's been approved. Any objection to the bill is amended? Saying none. 11 0. Next. Senate Bill 715, Wacomico County, Alcoholic Beverages, Repeal of Food Sales Requirement for Class B Licenses. This bill is sponsored by Senator Scarosa and Senator Eckhart. Removes a requirement placed upon a golf course license holder to have average daily receipts from the sale of food exceeding the average daily receipts for the sale of alcoholic beverages. This bill, as we know, only applies to Wacomico County. Um, there is one amendment, which is uh, found on page 13, and it doesn't change or remove um, anything, but it adds the authorization for um, Class A beer, wine, and liquor licenses in the time frame. So under the amendment, um, we're extending the period of time that a holder of a beer, wine, and liquor license can sell beer, wine, and liquor from Monday through Saturday between 6 a.m. and midnight to the, the current amendment proposal to Monday through Sunday between 6 a.m. through midnight. So extending it for a day. Okay, is there a motion to uh, favorable? It's been moved, seconded. Um, the amendment, any objection? Uh, I have one question, Senator Cruz. Which golf course is this for? Uh, this is for, um, it's in Senator Eckert's district. Um, I want to say Green Spring, but I'll, I can check that. It's, it's in her district. <laughs> well, actually, about ten, about ten years ago, there was a field trip to a golf course, the one on the other side of the bay, um, right on the water. Uh, yeah, if you go on three or one instead of fifty, and we did have a field trip. So, and people were uh, invited to play golf. It came about when I was trying to restrict pesticides on golf courses. <laughs> so they wanted to buy our love and had us for lunch and offered to play golf. <laughs> I went, I'm not a golfer. I tried. It was ugly. It was, it was a real mess. But it's very beautiful. They have a lot of um, uh, marshes and wildlife, and it is near the water. So it's uh, very nice. Two courses, I think, they have. Okay, uh, on the bill, any objections saying none? 715 passes as amended. Sorry. Senate Bill 755, Baltimore City, 40th District Alcoholic Beverages. This bill generally restricts license holders in the 40th Alcoholic Beverages District in Baltimore City from selling alcoholic beverages before 10 a.m. or after 10 p.m. Specified classes of licenses are exempt from restrictions on hours. The bill additionally authorizes the Baltimore City Board of License Commissioners to issue two Class C beer, and, beer, wine, and liquor licenses in the 40th Alcoholic Beverages District as specified. 
There is an amendment in your packet beginning on page 14. So the amendment, what it does is instead of two Class C licenses, it authorizes, it changes one to a Class D7, and it restricts it to, instead of in the 400 block, it says on the eastern side of the 400th block of North Howard Street. The, additionally, on the second Class C license, it is subject to certain qualification, or that one is subject to an MOU. And then on page 7 of the bill, it makes one change. So for a license holder of the 40th Alcoholic Beverage District, um, it says they may not begin before 10 a.m. or end after 10 a.m. within an area bounded as follows, and then it uh, sets forth some boundaries in the city where those hours are permitted. Senator Kurth, you want to speak on this Baltimore City alcohol bill? <laughs> Your light is on. <laughs> okay, just checking. Okay, um, is there a motion on the bill? It's been moved, hopefully, and seconded. Any objection to the amendments? Seeing none, uh, seeing no opposition, no hands, no lights, um, 755 will be reported to the floor. And it has a letter, I believe. Okay, last bill. Then I, I want to cover two other, <clears throat> two other areas, although we'll be done voting. Um, 7, 944. Okay, Senate Bill 944, Anne Arundel County, Alcoholic Beverages Licenses, Annual Fees. This bill requires the Anne Arundel County Board of License Commissioners to reimburse each license holder in the county the entire amount of the annual license fee for specified alcoholic beverages licenses for the 2020 through 2021 licensing period if funding is available from the balance of fees remitted to the county by the comptroller as specified. If the balance of fees remitted to the county by the comptroller is not sufficient to reimburse each license holder in the county for the entire amount of the annual license fee, the board is required to reimburse each license holder a percentage of the annual license fee in proportion to the total amount of the balance of fees remitted to the county. There is an amendment um, in your voting packet on page 17 from Senator Simon Eyre. The amendment limits the application of the bill to Class B, C, D, and H licenses, um, omitting the Class H, M, and racetrack licenses originally listed in the bill, and requires the board to reimburse license holders for the remaining balance of the 2020-2021 license fee in the next fiscal year under certain circumstances. The amendment also makes the act an emergency measure. Could you explain what a B, D, E, H, and M licenses are? Okay, wise guy. Um, okay, uh, I assume the bill is moved and, and seconded. Uh, any objection to the amendment? Seeing none, the bill before you. Um, seeing no objection, no lights, uh, that will be recorded as unanimous and go to the floor. I want to cover two quick things. I want the um, subcommittee chairman to just briefly tell you where the three statewide bills we heard a week or two ago, one, the grocery stores selling uh, alcohol uh, in Baltimore, and then the, the uh, off-sale delivery from restaurants and the other one from manufacturers. So just give a brief update so you know where it is. Thank you. So the, the one extending the executive order for restaurants is Senate Bill 205 has a cross file cross file of House Bill 12. The House has moved it out with some amendments. Um, they've sunsetted it uh, June 2023, and they also allow the local authorities to limit the capacity of how much they sell. Um, we're looking at those amendments and also considering putting an emergency in case the executive order uh, finishes before the effective date of the bill, uh, the emergency. So that's where that one is. Tell them that uh, I hate to call them both sides, but the different stakeholders agreed, maybe not all happily, but they signed off on it. Just yeah, for the they're close, they would both sides would like a little more of each, but I think they can live with where that is at this point. Um, the next one is the grocery bill, which is Senate Bill 763, House Bill 996. In the House, if you'll recall, that was the grocery bill where they did it for the food deserts, and then um, 
then that was required by locals to give them that. If it was not in a priority funding area, they had the discretion to give it. Yeah, that was Senator McCray late on a Friday night. Yeah. Okay. So in the House, the subcommittee voted uh, unfavorable. Um, and what we've heard is that the sponsor is planning to withdraw that bill instead of having it killed. We haven't seen that officially on the web page, but that's where we see with that. So we'll see what action we take here based on that. And then the last one is the uh, brewery bill, where it's same thing with the executive order. They're trying to extend what was in the executive order to allow them to do direct shipping uh, with third party. And then also uh, there's a limit that is in current law that they can only sell so much off premise um, and they've struck that as well. The two sides are basically they've got their positions and they don't want to move from their positions where they are today. Um, so we may have to, as the chairman says, split the baby. Um, and that's that's where we are. Have to use some Solomon-esque uh, wisdom to to try to work that out, but historically, as some of you know, we've tried. To um, Senator, the bill I asked you about yesterday is a local bill. It would not come to this committee. Uh, it was a bill that dealt with um, wine and and beer and and the food stores as well. We looked that up yesterday. It's a House bill and did not have a cross file to the Senate. So if it passes the House, then it would come to our committee. Okay. 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 Thank you. And the final thing, um, in the next hour, hour and a half, you'll be receiving the voting list for tomorrow. There are a number of bills and some, I don't want to call them complicated, but important issues, not that they aren't all important. We're going to have two election bills. Uh, I think we're going to have some education bills, um, SROs, maybe. Likely. Okay, and um, the FAFSA, maybe. I don't think it's so. Okay. Okay. Anyway, there are some bills. Um, we're we're not moving all of the election bills, but there are two, and I just want to give you a heads up because there is unlikely to be a hold while they will. Other bills heard on Tuesday or voted Tuesday might still make crossover. It's pretty crucial on a number of these bills. Um, one is Senator Kramer's bill uh, dealing with um, uh, mail ballots, not requiring a mail ballot election, but requiring uh, applications so people can decide to receive mailed ballots in a permanent fashion. It deals with um, drop boxes, early voting, and election day. So you might want to look at his bill on uh, mailed ballots. And also, if you're doing homework, uh, Delegate Wilkins has a bill that is about to pass the House or has passed the House that will be similar to what we look at. Uh, it's not exactly the same. We are not moving Senator Kramer's bill that calls for an all-mailed election. Uh, but, but we do want to try to give more opportunities to increase um, the opportunity to vote in the state of Maryland. The second bill is um, the, Senator, the Vice Chair's bill, which had 17 pieces to it, also called the kitchen sink. Um, uh, there were many parts to it. I believe she's going to have some amendments to trim it down some. Uh, so in advance, I don't want to go through it today, but you should look through it to the parts that you like and don't like or her cheat sheet little section. And the thing you don't like might be cut out of it anyway because a number of pieces are coming out. But if you want to do a little prep for that, it might be worthwhile. Um, Committee Council, any others I can give them the, should give them the heads up for? The Senate Bill 800 will be on the list. That's Senator Patterson's inmate job training bill. Yeah, that, that was the one we just heard recently. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're going to put it on. We think it's, uh, it's close to being ready or is ready for prime time. So that's mm -hmm. going to be on the list. Uh, also, just for transparency, 
the bill about uh, recruitment for the higher education 927. internationally, 927, we just heard is going to be on the list. There was no opposition to that. Anything else that we should highlight, either that might have controversy or, um, I mean, you're going to get this list in an hour, hour and a half. I just, the ones that are going to take some time, I wanted to give you some early notice. And again, you'll get the list soon. Um, yes? Bills are those? There's a couple different ones. Oh, thank you, Senator. Um, Senator Ellis and I have been talking about this for about a month, and we've been sort of waiting for the House to act. The House has acted. Well, they haven't acted yet. <laughs> oh, really? No. They, uh, they gave us what they are considering in their subcommittee, but they have not moved on what they had in their subcommittee. So, but We're going to take it up with a lot of their amendments. And we'll just have to work through it. I, it does not prohibit SROs, just so people understand that. It does not prohibit SROs, and it does allow for those counties choosing not to have SROs to still receive their grant money to address children at risk. I don't want to go into the rest of the bill because I can't tell you. Uh, we have committee counsel for that. So we're going to take that up tomorrow. It is not as the bill came in. It is with amendments, and it will be up to with the other body to amend it. Um, if when you look at it, will So are they taking, are they amending the, the House bill onto yours? We're, we're hoping to get the amendments out with the packet in the next hour or two. If not, we're going to have to do a few things on the, on the run while, while we're considering it. Uh, Stacy, anything else? Monday. Thank you. Um, the, the, I hate to call it Kerwin 2.0, but to change the dates in Kerwin because it was vetoed and overrode, it pushed the, the bill back a year. The governor has funded about half of what would, should have been in year one because he wasn't required to put it in the budget because it was not law. So making some adjustments in the original Kerwin bill, changing some dates, and also adding some new pieces to it because of COVID. Um, summer school, tutoring, um, to catch those kids up who've gotten crushed because of this. So that was introduced Monday. We are having a joint hearing on Monday, this coming Monday, at 3 p.m. We will have a joint hearing, uh, I assume it's virtual, um, with budget and tax, because it's part policy, part money. Uh, Ms. Heiss and her staff will walk through it. I had input before it was drafted. I have not seen it. Uh, Ms. Goodman has been involved in it, and I'm not going to ask you to explain it today. Oh, it's only 36 pages. Um, yeah, so that'll be a Monday at 3. You should ask questions because we're late in the session, and there'll be a, a move to move it quickly and not have it go to rules in the other chambers. It doesn't mean we can't do amendments to it. But we also need to understand we can do amendments to it, Butch and Tax can do amendments to it, and there'll be amendments on the floor. So that's Monday at 3. And they're doing a joint hearing with the House. The, same. the House is also having a joint hearing, but we're not having a four-committee joint hearing. Right, this they're time. having it like earlier, like at 1 or 12 or something. Right, so they're at 1, we're at 3, and, uh, and yeah. So it's, the bill as introduced is exactly the same as the House version, so we're all working right. from the same document. So we may take it up Tuesday and have a work session to go through it for, and consider amendments or whatever. Uh, I haven't looked at it. I don't know how complicated it is, and if we need some extra time, I'll push for extra time with the Senate President's office. Anything else? Uh, Ms. Foxworth, do you have anything we should? I don't want to drag this out. I just want to inform as much as possible. Anything that I they should I can't think do of any significant heads up, heads up on my end. Okay. So nothing till noon on the floor, and then we'll meet after the floor. Yes. 
Um, okay. Thank you. I, I talked about that. Yeah. I had mentioned possibility of Friday morning. I know Baltimore City has a, a, a caucus. There might be other meetings. So, regarding us, you're free. Uh, you know, whether we take two hours or five hours, I don't know. Okay, okay I think I had, yes. Uh, I'm sorry, one more thing. Just be aware that we have a lot of stuff coming from our voting session on Wednesday onto the floor, so be on the lookout for an email if you're appointed a floor leader for these. And so there's a lot, so just be prepared for that. And since we've been preparing for the voting tomorrow, the floor reports might be a little bit later tonight. So uh, There are two on the floor tomorrow that have been held over. There will be one or two more from the other day's voting. And we had two calendars right. that are sitting there from this okay. Past so day. there were two, the two more coming. Uh, we try to assign them to you, if particularly if it was your bill, Senator Lamb. You've got a bunch. <laughs> You're going to be the audiologist expert. Um, and uh, but again, we'll get. We have a list, and we'll try to get to you. And if at some point you say, I don't want it or I can't do it or I don't understand it, when you get contacted, let us know immediately. I don't want to put anybody in an uncomfortable situation. Senator Hester. Mm. Senator Ellis. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, so Monday is a full committee meeting uh, at 3 o'clock? We, we will be on with budget and tax, mm -hmm. getting briefed mm -hmm. on the part two of the Kerwin legislation that was just introduced. Yeah. Uh, when will we, do you know when we'll get that link for that? Or was it sent already? Goodman, do you know when we'll? Okay. Okay, thank to you. To the Kerwin bill? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No one's memorized it yet. Yeah. Huh. So, uh, um, I guess I have a, one of those anti-harassment trainers at that exact time. Which one takes priority? Which one will I not get in trouble? <laughs> Pass the decision to the teacher. <laughs> I, either you have to reschedule or you do that and you read it on your own. I mean, I, I don't know what else to tell you. Okay, all right. All right. I mean, I've got to tell you, in the past when we had this, we were told, First day of session in the first two weeks when it was a lot easier, we went downstairs, we did it, and it was done. Mm -hmm. You know, with four weeks left in session, mm -hmm. and we don't know when we're voting, mm -hmm. it's a problem. Yeah. I mean, you know, I, I signed up for Saturday, but if we have a double session or, or coming on Saturday. So yeah. it's late to be order, directing us to do this. Normally yeah. it should have been earlier in yeah. session. So yeah. I, don't, I don't know what to direct you okay. to do. I'll, I'll work it out. Okay. Okay, uh, that's all I have. Enjoy the rest of the afternoon. Thank you all. Good work.